to hear that uh, food outside anyway. Uh, do you guys have any already? Yeah, okay. Anybody from Saksin anyway? Right, from Saksin. Yeah, I am Saksin alumni as well. 2014. Yeah, 14, I think. Okay, 14, I think. Okay, for my part, let me introduce myself. Uh, I, think, I think all of you may heard, some of you may heard about uh, Crook name before joining this uh, event because then we are them doing like um, aggressive marketing now. Um, actually, may I, may I tell you first about who we are and what is the idea behind our startup, how you say our unicorn startup anyway. <coughs> think about like when you go travel abroad, right? Uh, normally you can book your flight ticket, your hotel room, very easy because now that market is Red Ocean already, right? A lot of like competitor and player in there packed with a huge amount of fun anyway. But think about the experience in between. When you land the country, when you go to the hotel, and what next? You have to go through a lot of like website page and blog to find what to do inside the country, right? Right. Somebody, sometimes you may have to go through a uh, 10 agent or knock door to the uh, next door agent in your country to find a way to book the ticket, find a way to book the tour guide, find a way to book the local transportation, Wi-Fi, and even a restaurant. So, Crook was born by the idea that uh, our founder, Ethan and Eric, he think that how about we group everything together on one platform? So you can find everything that you want, kind of experience in the, in the, in the, in the, in the destination that you, guys, you are going to. So we have, well, we are like a global platform that provide all the booking, all the experience inside the country that you are going to. Include the attraction and show, like the ticket for Khan show in Thailand, ticket for uh, Lady Boy shows in Pattaya, ticket for uh, Disneyland, blah, 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 like that. Activity experience, like you can book for like sky diving jump, uh, bungee jump, and etc. Right, tour and sightseeing, yes. Best food and is and all coast and transportation and Wi-Fi. Anyway, okay. Am too fast? Yep. We have a uh, 16 office now because the crook idea is like uh, we we want to do cross. Uh, booking platform for travel around the world. So we have small office around the globe, around the 16 office now. Actually, this number is not updated anyway. Uh, it's, uh, now it's a 17. And lately, we got the funding from Command Sack and Matrix funding around like 300 million USD already, right? So all this about uh, talking big. So I want to make sure that you get a credit from me. By the way, I think it's the best way to um, show you what the group is, is go through the app itself by my mobile phone anyway. So this is a quick step. You can capture the screen and read anyway. Okay, I'm gonna show you what Cook it really is. Okay, here we are. This is a Crook app. Once you enter, oh, maybe my signal in this room is low. Then you can select destination you want to go. Think about, uh -oh. oh, okay, my Wi-Fi is bad. Okay. Because I like graduated for a long time ago, so they not let me access their Wi-Fi anymore. <laughs> right, okay. OAS, low, low, very low signal now. Okay, here, think about I am Thai people. I am going to Hong Kong, so I'm going to Hong Kong city page. And then I plan my itinerary in the destination. First thing, I need the transportation from the airport, right? I can buy right away here with cheaper price, right? I can bookmark in my wish list or add to cart. <coughs> Else, I can shopping for the ferry to cross the island, or 
I find something else to do. Here, this new ticket. When you go in through, you can read all about the detail and how to use it so you know everything before you land into the destination. And more than that, because we have a 16 uh, uh, small office in, around the globe, so we can do one thing that other platform cannot do. We call localization. Even if I am Thai people, I change it to Thai languages, then everything in the platform changes to Thai languages. Right? And then if I are if I'm from Vietnamese, if I'm Vietnamese, then oh sorry. Okay, this is not because of the app, it's for the AAS anyway. Okay, come back. Now you see everything in Vietnam languages. So because of these two factors that we have uh, localization feature, and because we have like every activity and experience the traveler need to do in destination, so now we have uh, experience Almost, in six, uh, almost more than uh, 16 destinations around the globe, and the uh, number of users monthly, yes, a unique visitor, around 16 million. So it's all about the group. So maybe next time, when you go travel, you can find the things to do inside our platform anyway. Right? Okay, so where's, where's my part? I am a business development manager, but actually my part is the uh, F&B vertical. Here, i show you. This button, this yellow button, uh, best food and must eat. So I am uh, dealing with all the restaurants in Bangkok to find the best deal <coughs> and post and post LC sell on the platform as e-commerce as a product in e-commerce platform. So how can how can Crook get this cheaper price? Because uh, normally, think about that. Normally, um, all the restaurants, all the tour attraction, all of the event experience. They already have a commission for tour guide, right? Around 10 or 20 percent, something like that. So Cook just asked them, like, oh, can, can you give that commission to the customer in terms of discount? We just asking them, okay, normally you sell the ticket, like sell the retail price around 1,000 baht, but you give me commission 20 percent, so I earn 200. But I am an online platform, so I have a cheaper operation cost. So normally in traditional way, normal agent, we have to take around 20% to cover their cost. But for us, we can take only around 10% for cover our cost. Then we can give the rest 10% back to customer. So this is, the back, this, this is the core of the idea. Anyway, so I think of the IP pitching, I gotta convince you that group um, trying to disrupt the travel industry that haven't been standardized for around like almost 20 years anyway, right? By just using the advantage of platform search, search and the QR code. Oh, I forgot one thing. How, when, when you book to a group, how can you go to use the, what, you buy, what you buy in the platform? It's a QR code system. Assemble like, I have buy the buffet from this hotel in Hong Kong. Then, then when I visit the, 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 the hotel, I just show this voucher. Right? So the hotel can know my name, the time that I book, and the QR code. So the hotel can just scan the QR code to check me in, and then I can get the service I buy. Something like that. Okay. Yep. <coughs> this is all about the platform. The thing is uh, good enough for let you know what I have to do so far as a business development manager in Krug. I think it's, uh, if you have any question, we can talk later in uh, Q&A session anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's good now. So, um, uh, hi everyone, um, my name is uh, Wynn. Um, I've been on to this for a while. Um, I think uh, 
So um, when sit, um, so how many of you are actually running your own like startups or planning to run? So you like it looks like a team, right? No, you're not a team. Uh, so and any one of you are working at startup or or intending to create one on your own or you guys are all right uh how about you guys uh not yet exploring right it looks like someone who want to run your own business no okay so 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 the things about this is like is is really bad on my part what i prepared was uh what it was like to actually work in a startup and i just realized that it's actually about how to scale startups right so i uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you the company that I work for a little bit. And then um, it's, it's a great conversation because where we are right now, we are actually scaling, right? So I think what I want to do is uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the company and then um, maybe I'll address a few topics and then hopefully that create a conversation uh, that leads on to maybe a QA and a and things like that. Um, so the, oh, okay, yes, that's fast. Okay, so, um, so a little bit background about myself. So I'm a Sassin alumni, 2011 or 12, 11, yeah. Uh, so I always wanted to, very interested to do uh, like a startup entrepreneur. So it was that time that, um, you know, I was very close to Pinnick, which you guys will know as, if you study here, is Ajanik. So it was my time, it was Pinnick. Um, and we Sassin, we do a lot of like a business plan competition. That's what that's when I started, right? So we do business plan, we're in pitching. Uh, we won a few. Actually, we were quite successful our year. We raised in terms of uh, money. We got about I think close to two million baht just for the prize money. Uh, that's when the the first thing start. And then when I come back, graduated, I wanted to do my own uh, like startups, right? Actually, have my uh, video, but I can play that a little bit later. But it was about fintech. Right. So it was that time when there was no such thing as fintech. There's some movement in terms of startup when pick a thing come in and then you, you know you start the movement. But something I really don't like is I feel like banks is really bad. Right. I mean internally I feel like banks need to be disrupted. At that time we were young, we were energetic, we really want to disrupt something. And I was like, bang is one man. And um, so. I and a few of my teammates actually did some startup, and then um, we went to a few rounds of pitching. And at the last round that we almost get a funding from True, was the first few batch of True, True Essence. Um, P.A. Punamad, who actually was a Sassin alumni as well, EMBA years before that, gave me, a, gave me a very harsh, I would say a harsh feedback. Like, you know, you don't know shit. You don't know anything about banking. Uh, but during that time, uh, we actually did some market validation. Market validation is something very important, right? In terms of startup, you all may know. So we all, um, so we talked to some of the banks, and the banks said, "Hey, you know how is the startup going?" And I said, "You know, we quit. We couldn't get any funding. We couldn't get money." So the bank said, "You know, why don't come and work for us?" I was like, "Shit!" I was trying to disrupt a bank, and now I got to go and work for the bank. So, so, so in the end, I take that wording from PA. You know, take his advice. Say, you know. Okay, go and work f for the bank. So two years, I worked working in a bank. So I know the in and out of how the banking structure work. Next steps, um, through that banking relation, um, you know, I met a guy called Pisong Wang. You know, in a, in a startup, you might know Pisong Wang. So he called, you know, the tech is doing e-money stuff, fintech. Hey, you want to do fintech? Yeah, I'm really s suffering in the bank, you know, all this structure and shit like that. So working with e-tech, uh, two years in fintech, and now uh, we got acquired by Omise. So the company that I'm working around is called Omise. Um, so if you're in the startup scene, you might know uh, Omise. Omise started in 2013 for, uh, with June and Donny. So uh, June and Donny was uh, a few batch before us. So during that pitching, we actually saw each other, um, um, but they were very successful. Uh, we are not, but so right now I'm working for them. Uh, so the company is a payment gateway. We start off as a payment gateway. And then um, uh, it was started in 2013. Um, we have a lot of offices already. So in terms of businesses, uh, six offices, and then at the, at the other end is Omizego. I want to talk a little bit about Omizego. Um, but 
in terms of the journey is so started 2013 branch of whole uh, like investor so all this is Donny and June go and find other investor uh, and then um, so as they grow uh, the investors are like you know S SBI SN and things like that so I can tell you a little bit about the raising process and things like that um, because at that time it was uh, involved um, so the company that I'm now working for, so Omise actually split into two companies. Uh, one is Omise, which is still doing uh, the payment gateway business, and another one is actually Omise Go, right? Have anyone heard about Omise Go? So, no, right? Okay, Omise Go is, is a blockchain company. So we ICO last year. It was when the market is still very good, 2017. So we raised 25 million, right, first day. And that's something very interesting. That's something very weird. Why? Because as startup, right? When June and Donnie was doing this, you know, so, um, so when June and Donnie was doing um, um, a startup, they had to start small, right? The team was only five people. And then as they scale their business, actually, they had to do raise funding and things like that. Umisego is a bit different. Umisego from day one, we actually have 25 million raise, right? So there was uh, just CEO once, uh, and then it was me. So I'm like kind of a second person, and then we have our product. So day one is 25 million. And now, you know, the market is really down, but it's at the time where we have to start delivering the product. So we spent one year building the product, and now we are at the process of launching the product, scaling the, the business. Let me talk to you about a little bit about what we are trying to build so we can craft the context and the conversation, right? So when you're doing payment gateway, one thing that you do really do a lot is reconciliation. What I mean reconciliation is you have to take money from uh, your end consumer, uh, go to the, uh, the banks, the banks go to the merchant. So every day it's operational, operational. And at that time, June and Donnie was like, you know, is there a tech, because they are really techy, right? So is there a technology that actually will help to do all this whole thing? So they start exploring blockchain. And blockchain is really good in terms of uh, reconciliation, moving a set from one point to another, right? That's the picture. And then when they start exploring, they discover this blockchain thing is actually really big, what it can, can do. So what we are trying to achieve is this picture. When you have a credit card, like a MasterCard, right? you can have a bank, a Bangkok bank card. Right? You can go to Korea, you can go anywhere and swipe the card at any of the machine from any banks, as long as this shop say accept MasterCard and Visa. So there's a network that's connecting uh, this one silo bank to another bank to do settlement. Right, and that is the old world. What we're looking at, the new world, we are saying a lot of assets in the world right now will be digitalized. What I mean by digitalized is when you have fiat money, it becomes digital currency. You have cryptocurrency, you have mouse, right? Mouse is, is, is a medium of exchange, right? You earn some mouse, you use that mouse for discount, you have royalty points and things like that. So all these are assets that are moving into a digital world, right? If you're talking about like houses, like assets, or what in the industry we call a security assets, those can be tokenized as well, right? But the things about, so all these assets will be digitalized, but what is missing, there's no rail to transfer these assets. There's no such thing as a Visa network of the credit card. And that's what Omise Echo is trying to be, right? A very lame way of thinking about this is, you know, in Bangkok, we have BTS system. That's the e-wallet, something of, like, you have uh, an e-wallet that holds money, right? BTS. And you have this guy called the MRT guys. And then, these MRT guys have another wallet. You have another car. Same money. The point is, why you can't move from one asset to another? Because there's no underlying network. So imagine in a utopia world where BTS uh, infrastructure is connected to where they go, and then uh, BTS is connected to Omega Go, then these guys can actually transfer uh, values across. In another scenario, let's say a true money connects to Omega Go and there's another machine that's using our network in Vietnam, then you can do remittance and things like that. So sending money across, that's what we are trying to achieve. Um, so, so that's about the company, what we're trying to achieve. So let me talk about uh, what I do at Omega. So I'm business development, I'm like, number two, number three employee in terms of music go. Uh, so pretty much what I do right now, because what we, a lot of pitching, obviously, right? So we talk, our customers are banks, enterprise, big enterprise, 
uh, even some of the biggest fintechs we have, we talk to people like Facebook and things like that, or even Google, or even like you know K banks and, and all those infrastructure that that we're trying to sell our infrastructure to. Uh, so a lot of pitching, a lot of iteration, right? Because um, the things about blockchain or technical products is there's is no there's no cookie cutter, right? In this world, it's, everything is new. Everybody's trying to figure it out. So we are one of them. A lot of market validation. I change that every every time I go and see a new customers. I kind of change it in a way that I'm trying to find out what's realistic, right? And one thing about being in a startup that helps you is there's a lot of rooms for for experimentation and mistake. So that means a lot of quick, lean startup kind of approach. So if you are in your startup and you're trying to do something, I would encourage to do of this like a lot of pitching, change all the time, and see what sticks, and then try to. I might have like almost like seventy version of my decks right now, right? So so that's one thing you really want to do. if you want to scale up uh, in terms of your products and things like that. Trying to find what sticks, try to find what is repeatable, what even some of the opening. You know, blockchains can be really hard, like technical stuff, right? I, today we didn't talk about it, but when you talk about enterprises, uh, what I found in the beginning it was it was very techy. I was trying to sell technology, and then after like two or three months into it, I realized I'm not I'm not selling the technology. I'm actually selling the use case on the technology, right? What I'm describing to you just now, movement of assets, is like an internet. Right, a protocol layer, a very deep layer. But the point is, nobody buy, use the internet. People use service on the internet. You, when you want to do social media, you use Facebook. Right? When, you use, when you want to do search, you use Google search. That's when I switch from telling how good the protocol is to selling what the use case. And if you like the use case, then and kind of indirectly that this protocol is really good for that use case. So that's one example of how, how things are. Uh, uh. And other things is when you talk to like enterprise, there's a lot of people that you have to convince. So it's very important to find, um, to find the decision maker, of course. Some enterprises is tech lead, right? So obviously technical plowers. We know we say we're innovative. We have 80 developers. But then, if you're talking about people from, let's say it's a marketing business lead, then you don't, you don't talk about tech stuff. You want to talk about numbers. Hey, you know, we try this. It's going to, you know, it's going to be better, faster, cheaper for you. So, so like adapting uh, decks and things like that, adapting the conversation, that also helps. Um, so, yeah, so it's about validation. It's about pivoting, changing, even though you're already an enterprise. Uh, we don't... At OMSA, we don't take as given that we have like funding, because in terms of money, there's huge burn rates. When you raise amount that such amount of money, means there's a lot of expectation, right? People people buy your your coins to ICO. One thing that we do a lot, and we that I personally hate is is I don't have one boss. Now everybody who buys my tokens is my boss. Right, they comment on the community and things like that. So it's 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 it's, it's a different dynamic, I would say, and it's a uh, it's quite an interesting ones. Um, yeah. So I think I used about fifteen minutes. I did. I mean, we want to move on to Q and A, or anyone's have a question specific to the the payment thing. So if not, we can you know move into like a Q and A stuff, and I can share the stage with uh, another mentor. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we can move into Q and A and and. Ask any of the speakers questions that come to mind. Yeah, we should we should sit here right, together, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, I think we are from both sides because I well, he is a founder, oh, we, we but like yeah. Style, right? yeah, we he yeah, is founder, like but I am like the kind of like a uh, general manager that take care of the building the business in this country. So I am a scale of part. So I can answer that, how can we make our partner confident when we enter the country? And like, uh, how can we make our team confident when they enter to be part of startup anyway, right? So for his part, he can like, 
uh, say how to build the empire. From my part, I can say like how to hire the people anyway, something like that. Yep. Yeah. So just, just a little bit of clarification. If mm. like, uh, I'm not of the founder team, so the founder is still June and, and everyone else. My role is pretty similar to you, but, but it's just that I'm involved in quite early stage, so I can see kind of the journey a little bit. So uh, maybe, maybe we open up with a question first. Uh, so any, anything... Uh, you want us to talk about address anything at all? I think right with the startups, uh, uh, way of work or culture, how is it different and things like that. Yeah, I'm sure that wh when you guys are looking at uh, like a sundowner and then the topic, you have that lingering questions. Like you want that question answered, right? That's why you're here. So, so uh, what are those questions? Yeah, no. You want me to pick name? We can. Or we can like start from asking you like what you expect from Joy this evening, yeah. because because like uh, you spend a time like this time you can hang out with the colleagues or like blah blah blah. So why why you come here? What do you expect to hear from the speaker anyway? Right? Yeah. Maybe anybody. If you're not volunteer, I can start from the right. Yeah. <laughs> I will do that. Yes. Yeah. Are you a student? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Please. 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 Uh, please. So, uh, so when we started, like I said, the the products that we are trying to sell, if it's not cookie cutter, right? nobody knows what blockchain as a product is. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty hard. Um, and I think one thing I learned about this is, so because of the the ICO and the 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 crypto market was really good uh, last year. So a lot of attention, right? So we get called a lot, like people just like, hey, what's all these things about? What is this blockchain? I see, why are you raising so much? And I think what happened was um, with that, there was a very high expectation, a lot of misunderstanding what the blockchain or what the product is. I spent a lot of time educating uh, people. And I think that was a huge chunk of my time. So last year, Pretty much anybody calls, I will go, right? So there's no focus, uh, just because of attention we get and things like that. So we, we kind of forgot, we kind of forgot to be. Um, so year one, we were, we just go to conferences and things like that. People are like screaming, or go successful projects. But then after one year, we realized that you know we we actually had to behave like a startup, right? It doesn't, it is, it's not matter that you have twenty five mil in the pocket. Right. You have to be frugal or what you spend. You have to be very pragmatic. You have to hire the right people. The hiring the right people is very important. Like the team, so we started like three people. Now we have close to 50, right? We grow like almost 2x right now. So I was just talking to our HR. Our HR team said, if you hire uh, like today, the amount of uh, resume that we throw out, we will grow 5x in a day. Right, so that's pretty crazy. Um, so going back to answer your question is, if you have people, then in a startup, it's always this these four things. Um, so we have talks with with the team, and we, we we thought that this is very important. People finding the right people. When you have the find the right people, the process, because good people will have a good process, and a good process will help a startup grow, right? And that's something we didn't do. And then when you have process, you start looking at a product. Right. When you start, when you have a good process, you have a good people, you do a good products. And when you have a good product, usually you will end up with, with a profit. So, so in the conclusion is whatever need to be done as a startup. Those things you cannot, you cannot not do. Not just because you already have a money, right? So I think that's a lesson learned, and and we 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 kind of learn our lessons, and now we are focusing a little bit. Thank you. That's good for me as well. Um, okay, for me, I quite a different uh, story because I think like when we first doing something new, even 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 I didn't start group by myself. But by the way, my department is quite new when I joined them. Only the uh, second month that we announced to have a F and B product. Um, 
But however, one thing that we have to clarify first before we go out to communicate with our, our potential partner, uh, communicate with our customer, to make sure that the, our assumption is right. Think about like, we have an assumption that uh, people gonna, okay, my story is like, we have assumption that when people booking through the ticket, transportation and Wi-Fi, they may need to buy some food anyway, right? So, so we start to edit idea, but, but however, one thing that we forgot to consider about is the cost structure inside food industry is totally different from what's the cost structure inside the attraction industry, right? Think about you open the one theme park, right? So you have only a fixed cost, and what do you want? You want uh, people to fill in your capacity as much as you can, so are you willing to give a lot of discount to draw people in? But for food, for F and buying, it's, it's totally a different story. So, so, so f at first time, we uh, we thinking about some uh, idea like Ichigo. You may heard about that name already, right? But but when but, if, but after that, we found that that model will not suitable for all restaurant. And when we communicate that model to the restaurant, most of them have the objection in their mind because they think that oh how why I need to discount why I need to discount to you I already do English so well right actually uh, my first partner that I connect to is a uh, survey restaurant they are doing very well so when I connect to them hey can I can you want you want to give a discount promote more uh, like a sales your product on a platform that already have a uh, 10 million people at that time looking for the things to do in Thailand and Bangkok he said no because, because he already on the broker platform, everything that talk about them a lot already, right? Even I convinced that, oh, because like, you give discount 20%, though, so think about you can have like 100,000 uh, of table, then you lose only about like 15,000 baht. That equal to just uh, one blog post in the famous uh, broker. He still say no. So we have to come back and reconsider, oh, okay. Maybe sometime, um, like even ET code, they not have like survey deal on them, right? So they come back and say, oh, okay, we are a platform for traveler. Then how can we earn the money? How, how people in traditional way earn the money, right? So people in traditional way earn the money by become the tour agent and lead the bus to the restaurant or lead the customer to the restaurant. And restaurant give them a commission, right? So if we, if, we, if we come back and ask ourselves and learn more about industry before we go out again, then we know that, oh, okay, I changed the question. Hey, hey dear marketing manager, do you have commission when, when, I, when, when I bring Taiwanese people, Hong Kong people, or Singaporean people to your restaurant? He said, yes. So may I ask that commission, and then, and, and, and then it's nothing. So I just ask the commission. He will give me a number of commission, and then I just split that commission in half and use that as a discount. Another thing as a my profit. So first thing, the question from this is like, don't uh, think all the way by yourself. Just like uh, learn what the industry uh, he is. Same as him, like he he trying to disrupt the bank industry, right? But first time the competitor said that you don't know anything about shit in the industry. Right? Same as me, I have no nothing. I have, I have shit in this industry anyway. I know nothing about how they deal with business. I just have an idea that, oh, this idea is very, very work. So the so first thing you have to accept is that not about uh, pro prevent the failure. Just go out, ask more, uh, keep asking the right question until you find a solution. And then um, my first three months, I connect around like 100 of prospects, like 100 of restaurants, and then I got back only two, mm, only 2% actually. Right, but now my success rate uh, to connect the restaurant is about 50%. Because now we understand more about, about what happened inside the industry. And now we sit in, the, in our partner mind, actually sit in the restaurant owner mind. And we understand more about uh, customer behavior as well. So we cannot prevent uh, failure in the, in the early stage for sure. You have to be strong, confident, and accept it. Keep doing that. Yep, like that. I think one more thing that I can might add is, is that thing when we talk about people and when you're saying that one are the impediment, impediment or things that we learn from the early stage to now that we feel that is really important and should be addressed early on is related to people, which is culture, right? We have, we grow so much and we grow so fast. We, we are we're at one point where, you know, just anyone with a basic uh, resume, we just, just hire in. 
and then as the, the integrated into the company, the culture is not, right? It's not who, who we are. And, and, and there's a, this turnover kind of thing, which I think that's really important, right? Don't, don't be desperate. If it's, not, if it's not like overwhelmingly, yes, that this person you want to join your team, then don't bring in that because that dynamic will just, will just bring down your team, right? If you have like, most likely if you're a startup, you have like five people. Right, and you're growing like crazy, and you, you just accept everyone. And this guy is just, is just don't see the things as you see, and bring in that negativity or different ideas. We just stop you. You are not moving forward. So I think people culture is is so important, and you want to address from day one. Yeah. Any next question? Yes. Uh, so I understand like startup fails a lot, like you say, like you have failed project. When do you know whether this is considered as a failed project? Like, do you when to push on and when to just pull the plug? Okay. So before you start doing a project, you need to set up two things that are very important. First thing is the objective of the project. Secondly, is how you measure the result. Right. Okay. Um, example like recently, I we we having uh, one project that want to try to book, be, become an agent to book a J5 restaurant for traveler. That's extremely impossible actually, right? Um, but, but we managed to get that anyway, right? Um, what we have done so far, we, we, we just, as I talked earlier, we have to understand the situation of J5 and we have to understand her life balance, her life cycle actually, right? So I meet her in midnight because the shop closed at that time by midnight. So we do like, okay, we will send the email to you every day. For, for, for confirm, for, for us that it is a valuable slot for our customer anyway. However, um, at the very end, I, at, at the beginning, I said two, I said two things. Objective is uh, find out if my assumption is right. If I assumption is right, this activity should lead more traffic to the platform because people see the name. They were trying to go to the platform. Even, even, even the capacity is full, they might go way around in the platform to find the other thing to eat. That's my assumption. So first thing I set up, the protocol or cookies things like to track that how many people come from this channel, right? And second thing, I should be able to manage these activities, this DFI reservation with a very, very little workforce because it's, it's ridiculous if I have to manage this activity with the uh, profit only, okay, I, I charge customer for reservation, only like 50 baht. So it's really ridiculous because if Safe I have really limited of capacity, only like seven table around, right? And only like five or six round per year, per day. And she gave me only one table per round anyway. So only seven table times 50, so I will earn maximum only 350 baht per day from this, from doing this. So it's gonna be ridiculous in terms of the cost wise. So I, so, I, so, I, so I set up the team, like uh, the intern team, one intern uh, like uh, allocates this task to her. So my measurement is two things. It should bring traffic. Secondly, the operation should be very smooth to handle it so far. However, after three months, okay, at first month we be doing smoothly, but when we enter the peak season, right, um, a lot of traffic come from every channel, even like call to J5 by themselves, mail to J5 by themselves, to our platform. So we cannot handle that um, booking very well. And a lot of like, harassment, uh, like uh, struggle. So this is fail in terms of measurement first. Secondly, J5, uh, J5 just like, uh, recently, J5 just uh, broken her finger by herself, like to have to heavy to hold the pen. And then all the, all the booking have to cancel. And then they have to refund um, the, 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 the booking fee to all the customers. Think about even a refund, but the money is very small, but the credit card system charge my fee anyway. Right? So now it's two measurements already reflect this, uh, this, this kind of thing is not work. However, it's, it's, it's really bring traffic into the platform anyway. When people search your file, crooks show up and your file reservation. But however, when we reconsider about risk, and reward, right? Okay, downside is like we may, we may make, make our customer angry because like we cannot fulfill our promise, blah, blah, blah. But reward is the only traffic. So as a, as a, as a project initiative, 
right? Or maybe start up your project anyway. We have to reconsider that what's the pro and con of what we are doing. We should continue that or not. Or even like we you should, you should set up milestone about like uh, every month, every week to come and recheck the same project again and again. Then now I realize that, okay, even like peak time, peak time in New Year create this much problem. And then next peak time is coming in in Chinese New Year. So I don't want to take that risk anymore. So I shut down this project out. Something like that. Okay, yeah, I hope this may answer you. Yeah. So, so uh, I think just two things to add to that. When you try to experiment or MVP or trying to uh, you know, validate the market, uh, it has to be quantitative, right? It's not quantitative in just what you measure. I also think that there should be multiple uh, quantitative. Obviously, you have one main one. What I'm trying to say is this. Imagine, right, you're trying to cook this like tom yum dish, and you want, you want to have 10 people uh, to test your tom yum, right? And then you say, you know, if five people say, uh, it's good enough means it's good enough for your for to sell. Uh, if you do it once, you might, you know, uh, like don't achieve the process. It's very rare in terms that you do it once and then you stop. I want you to look in at this into a series of things, right? What I mean by quantitative and series of things is, you let them try the first time, but you measure everything. You say, you know, I put in sugar, let's say ten grams and soya sauce whatsoever, and you try it again, right? Because maybe the only elements that makes the whole thing fail is two gram or three gram of uh, you know, sugar, right? So, so it's not like one time you fail, no. You have to know why you fail, and to know why you fail, you have to have a, like a kind of a different metrics. And if it's good, you try it a few times. Because if you try so much, you will know like, you know, this is not working, let's try a different way. But I, I don't recommend you just do it one and then just finish it all. Number one, you don't know why you fail. It might you might just be so close, right? Yeah. So so that's something that you also might want to think. So repeat it a lot of times. Do it a different way. Trying to and then when you do it, don't try to change multiple elements because you don't know what that works. But if you change one, you can do an A/B testing, right? So and then in terms of experiment, you always can fragment them. Like a startup, it's easier to to do a fragment experimentation. Um, yeah. So. They're going this way, right? Maybe we have a question from the two ladies. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing that I learned is, so in the interviewing process, in the beginning, I was, you know, most of the time when you're interviewee, right, you ask someone to come and get in, and then uh, we have a lot of rounds of interview, I'll tell the reason why a bit later, but in the beginning it was this guy, the first question I asked is like, you know, introduce yourself, so on and so forth. It's pretty much, you sit there, and then you try to let that person sell him or herself to you, right? And um, I think it's important that that person can convince you, but it's also your responsibility to sell them, right? You have to be very clear in terms of what the culture is. You have to be very clear what you be okay to accept, where well, what you're not okay with, is to have that kind of clear picture because they might be very smart, but it doesn't fit into your culture and you're not selling your culture or telling one what it is, then the whole process just just um, you know doesn't work out. The second question is about how to make your 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 um, a people who are want to work for startups in the early stage startups usually is of a different characters. I would say usually, usually. Because these people are like you know, I'm really bored with either banks. You know, I hate banks culture. I need something new. Or, or so, so in terms of that communication, it's not just about the culture, but your vision, right? This is, this is not something that, it's not an interview for a corporate, 
right? You fail this, you can find another job. This is me and you, my friends. It's like I have three startup. I have three people in a startup, right? And then you be the fourth person. If you got to stay until like 10 p.m. just to serve our custom customer, you have to kind of sense or you have to make sure that this person will go with you. And because of people who, who, who work with you in the first startup, usually the compensation is different. Uh, the compensation means different means they don't get paid in salary. Usually they get paid and then some equity, right? Which also means you want them not as an employee, so you should look at them as an employee. You should look at them as a partner. To make yourself different from whatever in the LinkedIn or big, big um, corporation is, I encourage you to sell your vision. Make sure your vision stand out. Right? Make sure you, your vision stand out, what you're trying to do is stand out. And that, that sell search, right? Because what, what you really want is you don't want hundred people to to be attracted to your to your ads. You just need two or three right people. It's okay if you get rejected by the rest because they're just not the fit. Right. Yeah. Um the point I'd like to add, I'm um, fail on LinkedIn all the time. I haven't have any of my team come from LinkedIn anyway, because I think like uh, for for convince them or like draw their maximum performance to work at startup, we need a uh, time and the relationship between us to create trust. So normally people who post job on LinkedIn they're looking for a job that have like clear career path, um, benefit at the welfare, blah blah blah. But like for startup wise, I think. I believe that it's kind of like we are grouping to do some project together. So normally I just ask my friend like, hey, do you have somebody to like uh, looking for a job, blah, blah, blah. So I meet them in person and pitch the idea by myself. We're going to share the world band. Come with us. We have cookies. Something like that, right? So, 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 so like that. So that. So, so then, so, so, so then, I just see their reaction anyway, right? See their reaction. Like, do, do you do you really believe me? Or you just want the money from me, right? Yeah, something like that. So, so um, okay, my rejection rate is very high. Example, like I just uh, hired one uh, business development associate like recently. So this 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 girl uh, survived from 120 resume that sent to me, but actually she come from my personal connection anyway, right? So even like got 120 uh, resume from LinkedIn. Most of them like uh, fail me in terms of the faith, belief, and understand about startup life. Right? So I, I think it's kind of like nature of the job board anyway. Right? If you want somebody to like very deep go into you, go to the hell with you, I think you have to warn them in personal right? when we do interview. Yep. I think one, two things that might actually help is, so one thing that we'll start doing right now is we also start hate hunting. The reason why we start hate hunting is we find out that when you come to LinkedIn, it's like you know, it's 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 very unclear. So if you know that in terms of your organization, what job needs to be done, you look for like a very close uh, comparable, and then you just have a list of. So we have this specific role which we think is very good, very good from IBMs. So as I said, I'll just get IBM people. You know what I mean? The, be very specific on what you want. The second thing is also like. As much as you want to sell whatever your products or your vision is, you might want to talk to them about some other stuff, right? What you do, what your culture is. The reason why is if you cannot carry the conversation beyond work scope, then, then most likely, you know, the working dynamic is, is, is bad. You know, if this person you can work with but you cannot have lunch with, then maybe a bit weird, right? A startup is very small. A corporate is okay, you know, I can like accounting and screw you, I, I, I won't see you for lunch. Startup, you can't, it's like you pack in a small co-working space. If, yeah, if you don't carry that conversation, you kind of like don't feel the vibe. It's, it's always been like a toss of a coin, right? I mean, employ um, these kind of things. So don't worry about getting the right person. The interview process is not the first time. The interview process is the three months that you're working them with, right? So it's okay to let them go. Or it's okay for them to like you know this is not working. The interview process is longer than than, than just the first interview. Yeah. 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 
Oh yeah, that's very inspired me. Anyway, um, yeah. So, and another and another thing that I should add is like where we can find the right people. If you're not LinkedIn, and if like, and you don't have much like uh, connection to the like very strong attention people, just go to industry that you want to disrupt. Yeah. Right. Right. But like uh, even if, okay, one of my colleagues is a restaurant owner. Another another of my colleague is a restaurant manager. It's like go there like hey, do you ball? Wanna share the world with me? Do you want to step on the Millennium Fund Corn and go out with me? Something like that. Anyway, right, so, so, so go to the industry that you want to instruct. And, and if they already mature in that industry, okay, in Kruk, we have many Agoda people, right? Because uh, in Agoda, the, the reason that they told me why you move from Agoda, because you have, even that you already have like a lot of money, very good compensation, very clear career path, why you move to Kruk? Since we are only startup that are trying to scale up, he said that it seems fun. It seems fun. I so bored there, man. Something like that, right? So, so, so people who build startup that mature already before, they have like the very right characteristic to perceive challenge as a fun, right? So, so they want to change the world. They already they already done changing the world, so they find the next world to change. Something like that, anyway. Yep. So maybe we'll take one or two last questions from the audience, mm -hmm. and then we have some food outside too. So if you want to keep asking questions, that's okay. Any? Any? This is a very rare chance to meet us together anyway. <laughs> no, normally I didn't step out of my office like here. Then ask. Startups are not, are not easy. Yeah. And, but for you, I want to ask you, but you, but it's different because you already had the budget beforehand, you know. Mm. But for for me, like I just want to know how do you, how do you like, when do you know you, when's the right time to scale to raise funds? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So so normally it's like. Um, so to answer that question very simply is obviously you have to know your burn rate, right? Right. So when when is so usually there's uh, a few check marks. Obviously, number one is your financial. If you're gonna close down very soon, you need to raise one, right? Th that's for like your desperate reason. But there's also things like strategic movement, right? Like you know sometimes um, it's very important to get smart money smart partner and you need to raise, right? You need that partner right now just to grow. So, uh, but some things that you want to think about is in terms of dilution, your your equity dilution, right? Uh, you don't want to go into like a down round in early things, but I think two things you want to think, think about. Is this, the, the thing about, I think when you go back 2011, when I was start pitching for, for fun, it was really hard, like nobody want to be, give you money. Now it's like every uncle is a VC. You know? <laughs> in Thailand, let me assure you, even now, there are money out there. Like you can get money, right? The point is like, is this money good for your company, right? If you're not desperate, don't, don't take it. And it's not just about taking VC money anymore. There's also a different way of doing it. Like, I mean, I wouldn't kind of like, because coming from a blockchain standpoint, I, I wouldn't recommend the ICO right now, but there's different way. There's crowdfunding, there's ICO, there's VC. There's a lot of VC in Thailand. It's just not a good enough uh, like startup. So I want to you to spend time thinking about strategic move. How is it important to you rather than just taking in money because you're like desperate, you know, things like that. Yeah, it may, if you can last the, the journey. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, strategic point is very important. Um, I have two story. One is a story where I heard from the crook dinosaur when they found the crook up. And another story is like my story that I, I found uh, for every department in Bangkok. And then now I got a lot of like um, budget from, from, from the headquarters. Anyway, right. So most thing is kind of like how to acquire the money and like where where you can get and like when you need to get it. Um, first of all, Crook just start with the idea. In the first, I don't remember much about three months, first four months, they struggle to 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 do a contract with the small attraction, small attraction around Hong Kong, like easy to do anyway, right? What's China going to die? Easy to do, but but suddenly our CEO just spent about like six months to dealing with one attraction. With that attraction is the Hong Kong Airport transfer speed train. Right? After we got that attraction, we just then then we got we got the price. We just sell that price, that's cost price on the platform without profit. Then what happened? The activity the, that activity already have a lot of traffic go through them every day, every month. Right? So we just go to where that have a traffic. We just share 10%. That's enough to get attention to prove that our idea is right. right. So, so, so how to prove our idea is right? We should have a user anyway. Right? So, so, so better than just like go to like tell any small partner, you just go big. Go to pitch to like uh, where, is, where the strategic partner that can make change. Um, for me, when I start, uh, I want a story. So, so after that, Crook like got the first series, uh, first angel investor, and then like uh, because I proved already that people can adopt to using the QR code as a voucher ticket to go through any activities. So, pretty poor idea. Okay, for my part, like I have to prove that um, people will looking for the way to make reservation and go to restaurant to confirm the signature is easier than before. Think about like. Near, near than book through a cook, why you just not go to the restaurant website itself and just type your email? Just that. Right? Why not? So, so people not believe me anyway. Right? So I go to so and spend like a two months to make them believe me that I'm going to help them get through the market that they never reached before because we, are asked, we position you, we position as a, your marketer. Right? So after I got signed by them, I just list them up. And now, uh, after three months passed, I send them 2,000 table already. But actually what it is, actually it's a, it's a traffic that already looking for to go there, but they're looking for more convenience, right? So, so it just proof. So, so the key learning from this is like, don't waste your time to do something small. Just go to the where they have a money there, where they have a traffic there, where they have a user there, right? Think about Grab. If Grab start from like a tuk-tuk, it's going to be doomed for sure, right? So they start from, for at the motorcycle uh, taxi. So there is what? There's a lot of supply. There's a lot of demand. There's a lot of money flowing there. Something like that. So you have to go to the right place anyway uh, for build for build the business, for get, att for get attention, to make your, your rational convince more make sense. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. One good indication of when you want to raise the money, and I heard this from one of the one of the startup founder, is when your business is doing really well. Yeah, because it's 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 when you have that growth rate and you need extra fuel. That's when you you have to even though you have some funding and you can last a year, but that's when you want to take a hook, right? Because you have to take ride the wave, and also reversal thinking is. If you're not doing so well, most likely you cannot raise, right? So when you want to raise, when the things looks good and you need the extra puff in the power, yeah, either for strategic move or financial help, yeah. No, you be you want to be the second guy who moves really fast, or the third guy who moves really fast, yeah. I mean, yeah, first, yeah. Usually, most of the use case out there is, is, is like, is, is obvious, what, uh, but, uh, but I feel like a very important things is like ideas are pretty cheap, right? I mean, I mean, if you look into like, 
the projects, even though for us, like, um, we have similar projects who raise much bigger than us. So you say 25 million is a lot, but in our world, 25 million is like people raising like, are like 100, 200, 300 million, right? With the same use case, right? So it's not always being the first, but I think it's not about being the first, it's about your core CVP, it's about being un unique, right? And, and if you if someone have done it before, you can reiterate, and you can improve on that, then, then that's, that's a win.